Hello, my friends. We're about to launch our inquiry into Minova. It's a beautiful morning here in Texas today. This old hot coffee sure is good. Mm -mm. Well, let's launch this little endeavor. Minova is about comparing one or more dependent variables across two or more groups. And Minova stands for multivariate analysis of variance. And ANOVA is a special case of Minova. And we've just gone through ANOVA. Now, as I conduct the analyses in SPSS and later videos, I'm going to assume that you watch the video series for ANOVA. Uh, do you remember the following? We started this out way back there in comparative analysis, talking about t-tests. And we said a t-test has two groups and compares them across the value of one dependent variable across two different groups. And of course, these values were normally distributed. Remember that we move from t-test to ANOVA and said ANOVA instead of ha can have two or more groups. And I drew this diagram with three, which compared across one dependent variable. And we said that t-test is indeed a special case of ANOVA, that a t-test is an ANOVA with only two groups. Well, now we move forward to MANOVA. MANOVA can have two or more groups. So here I've done three groups. And when we do MANOVA, we look at more than, we can look at one or more dependent variables. In this diagram, I have three groups, and we're looking at the values of, of two different dependent variables. See, ANOVA is a special case of MANOVA. ANOVA is a MANOVA with only one dependent variable. So MANOVA is pretty cool. Now let me tell you a little bit about how MANOVA works. We have the dependent variable 1 for each of these. We have the dependent variable 2 for each of these. So what MANOVA does is MANOVA does a curve fit of those variables. And it's important, again, that they have normality in those dependent variables because MANOVA then does a curve fit, and then MANOVA compares these unique curves. Do you see that? You have variable 1, variable 2 for the first group, variable one, variable value two for the second group, and of course, the, the same dependent variables for the third group. So it takes value one and value two and builds them into a curve fit and then compares those curves. That's, that's fairly profound. Now, the basic assumptions of MANOVA include the following. Uh, certainly, you have independent random sampling and you have a level of measurement of the variables. Now, you will control how the independent sampling is done. The level of the variables means simply that the, uh, the groupings are nominal or ordinal. Uh, they're, they're just they're grouped out there, male, female, uh, different institutions, that type of things. And then the dependent variables uh, need to be either need to be at least scale continuous type variables. Ratio variables make the best. Uh, dependent variables in, in MANOVA, in my opinion. We have to have linearity of the dependent variables. Now, that means that those, those dependent variables will be uh, correlated, and we would establish that with a correlational analysis like a, a Pearson R. We must also have multivariate normality. That means that all of the dependent variables are normally distributed, and then we must have multivariate homogeneity of variance within groups, and multivariate of uh, homogeneity of variance between groups. Now, we'll establish uh, some of these uh, fairly easily. The test for the basic assumption of MANOVAs include the following. Now, I want to mention to you that uh, the sampling and the, the, the data uh, distributions and the, are, are very easily under your control. Don't have to really do great statistical sampling there. But when we do the linearity of the dependent variables, we're going to run a Pearson R or some sort of correlational coefficient. When we look at the normality of the dependent variables, we'll do kurtosis and skewness as we did with ANOVA. Uh, we will do multivariate homogeneity of variance between the groups. So that'll be a Levine's test. And we'll do the multivariate homogeneity of covariance between the groups, which will be a box M. That really is fairly cool. Now, let's move on to the research questions for MANOVA, and they are focused on differences. This is a causal comparative. We call it comparative analysis. So when we compare, we would be looking at differences. It's always in good form when you do a quantitative analysis. You ought to start by getting your descriptives. 
And this one is, what are the percentages of female, Hispanic, and African-American students in two-year degree-granting public, for-profit, and private, not-for-profit colleges in Texas in 2011? Obviously, my groupings are my for-profit, my not-for-profit, and my public, my public, for-profit, and not-for-profit colleges. I have three groups. I will be looking at three variables, the percentages of female, the percentages of Hispanic, and the percentage of African-American students. But all this does is just call for my descriptives. Now, here's the real MANOVA research questions. Do differences exist in the percentages of female, Hispanic, and African-American students between or among public, for-profit, and private, not-for-profit, two-year degree-granting colleges in Texas? Now, notice that I said between or among. If it had just been two, I would have said between, but there's two or more. There's actually three, so I said between or among. The question focuses on differences, exist in the, here are the dependent variables, between or among the grouping variables, and it's in Texas in 2011. Now, the hypothesis should match the research questions, in my opinion. Now, I want to remind you, that there are different ways of doing this. There are, there are many ways of writing questions, many ways of writing hypotheses. There are many right ways of doing it, but however, there are some wrong ways. This is the way that I choose to do it. I have a descriptive question, I have a methodology question, and now I have my hypotheses for my methodology question. And you notice I have the plural hypotheses because I'm going to include my null hypothesis and my alternate hypothesis. And my null hypothesis is that no differences exist in the percentage of female, Hispanic, and African-American students between or among public, for-profit, uh, uh, public, for-profit, and private, not-for-profit, two-year degree-granting colleges in Texas. Let's go back to the question. Do you see that my hypothesis exactly matches my question? The null is that there are no differences. The alternate is, is that differences exist. Okay, the protocol for conducting MANOVA follows. Uh, always you provide your descriptives. You have to obtain those. You examine the data level and the assumptions. Uh, you conduct the MANOVA. You can do a post hoc analysis as needed if you find significant difference. Uh, some folks disagree with doing post hoc analysis. You know, Guys, there, there's researchers that agree with everything, and there's researchers that disagree with everything. You just have to make your own decision. And if you, and if you have significance, you do post hoc, in my opinion, and then you evaluate the effect size and power if the significance is found. Again, I want to thank you very much for your loyal support as we have pursued this, this, this mighty endeavor. Uh, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your you're really getting this on for us. So, as always, your, your patronage keeps my family fed. Man, I need to make the money from teaching this course. Uh, live long and prosper. And I think it may be more appropriate say, to say, may the odds be ever in your favor. Hope to meet you on the other side.